Chapter 7, Hell School. That school shoring up by the bay. My fondest memory of Hell School is being introduced somehow to Salvatore Ferragamo shoes. That one student who drove themselves to school, yeah, that one. But at what expense though? I think I kind of knew. But it's not my story to tell and I'm definitely focusing on me now. What if I told you that I was in school or my time was taken up by school for over 10 hours a day? That there was no such thing as elective classes. I just had to endure them all and endure I did. I was not a nerd, or at least I didn't think I was. I am, however, a really good test taker. Multiple choice, elimination through logical reasoning, that is my strength. All those time I spent taking random quizzes on Reader's Digest paid off. First, there was the entrance exam. Before that, finding out about the school. It was two years old and not finished, or maybe better description, is still growing. It wasn't well known, not as prestigious as the other already established school. To this day, I wonder if my parents really believed I could do this or if sending both of their children to private school has become unsustainable. I passed the exam, of course. There is no such thing as FERPA or equivalent law that prevents schools from posting results with your full name on it. This was before the internet was widespread and I had to go in person to check if I made the list. Somewhere around the middle, I ranked. Next stop, interview. Despite being well-read, I somehow did not have a believable answer when asked, who do you admire? Catholic school kicked in and I'm pretty sure I answered, Pope John Paul II, or something. He did just visit the country and the great jubilee is still playing in my mind. Open your heart to the Lord and begin to see the mystery that we are bound together as one family. Something like that. I would let, I would later like, I would later, like two years later, maybe, find out that the interviewer is Christian is not, and does not believe in the Pope. Yikes. One day, I will get over that cringe. I also took the test for another school that I can only imagine is even more hell. I would have been sent to live with my paternal grandparents, my aunt, her husband, and her five children in a house that is only fun to visit but not actually live in full time. I passed that exam and after some deliberation decided that I did not want to give that commute a try at 12 years old. So I gave it my best at the spawning hell school by the bay. Rumor has it that it, the land was reclaimed. It wasn't supposed to be there but somehow it is now. Regardless, the school was built almost floor by floor with the new arrival of each incoming freshman batch. Because it is a public school, parent involvement, both money and time, were crucial. My parents did not make time for the PTA, Parents Teacher Association meetings. They made up for it with the monetary dono donations whenever the need arise. After all, they, ho they only had one child left in private school. I don't remember my rank, but it did not matter. Only the first 36 spots were pre-selected for the premier class. That's right, there were four sections of 36 students each, except for mine, which had 37 and rumors of an undeserved spot of someone who didn't quite qualify to be there. Parents, I'm talking to you directly. If your child cannot qualify on their own merit, then you are not really doing your child any favors. They will struggle, then you will struggle. You will struggle to understand why they're failing. Batch 3, class of OPOR, as in O-W-P-O-R. I made it. I will not have to wake up at 4 a.m. to be in school over an hour away from home. Instead, I woke up at 5 a.m. and take a Jeep, then a tricycle, and maybe spend less than an hour to not be late for class. I was ecstatic. But first... I had to go through the ordeal of custom ordering uniforms. 
I am fat by skinny, petite, Asian girl standards. The uniforms only go through large. There was no such thing as an XL even. Everything after large was custom made and special ordered. I doubt that was really a surprise because I never did fit in in my elementary school uniform either. The skirt had to be a specific shade of green. Envy. Envy us. You other school with plain colors. Not only was it a different shade, it was also patterned, similar to private school uniforms. Because the local public schools just used solid prints. Blue, green. In college, I met, I met people who did not make the cut and were somehow impressed that I did and wondered why we were attending the same college as them. But I need to not get ahead and stop trying to escape hell school. My homeroom advisor kept trying to rename me. Ma'am, please don't make me call my mama, I think to myself. My mother specifically took away one letter from the correct spelling of my legal first name. Everyone else tried to put the other letter back. Ah, uh, they just couldn't comprehend, and sometimes they just give me a new name. I'm gonna freestyle this for now because I just cannot write the second part of this. So, hell school was all that, and there's going to be a second part. For my gratitude statement, however, I am grateful for everything I endured in this school because it made me who I am. And because of this school, I have one of the best friends that a, that a girl could ever ask for. This episode is dedicated to you, Jang. Get some rest. Love you.